So in this session, let's take a look at the left hand side because it's quite clear, it's quite structured what they're going to do. We're going to find an R module. We're going to load an R module. We'll be using the R interpreter to do with trivial things. See a list of installed R packages. Load an R package, quit the interpreter, and we're going to run an R script. Now that is loading and running R. That's this, that's this session. For that, I have exercises that do exactly that, uh, that, that, that follow exactly the same structure. So I'll go through a bit in more detail um, about how to load run an R. So actually, this is already a, quite an over. Let's zoom in on this thing. Put image new tab there. This nicely sums up this whole session until uh, 9.45. This is what we're going to do. We're going to find an R module. Spoiler, use module spider. That's needed to load an R module. Let's use for module load. This allows for to run an R script or to use the R interpreter. Use the command R for that. And then we're going to 3 one start the interpreter. Print hello world. See the installed packages. Load the package. Stop the R interpreter. And run an R script with R script. This is, this is the, the cheat sheet for this session. But one thing I didn't talk about yet is modules. And I'm going to ask you now what modules are. So um, what are those modules I've been talking about? Luca, what are those modules? Yeah, it's OK. If you don't know, that's fine. Eric, what are modules? No idea. That's OK. Um, Sarah, what are those, those module things I talk about? You're muted. Okay, so yeah, sure. Good stuff. You want to say what modules are, but you're muted, so I can't. Um... Yeah. I actually don't know. So... Uh, oh, excellent. Yep. Who knows what modules are? Maybe uh, this is just a super uh, stupid start of me. Let's go back to a computer cluster here. So, um, so on our computer cluster, we have a module system. Who has ever used the module system on a computer cluster? That you use module space spider or module space load. Let's take a look how much I need to go in depth here, right? So this is, yes, I've been using a module system. And this means, nah, I have, I have no idea what it is. I've never, I've never used it. Because that allows me to go a bit more detail if needed. So this is a yes. Yes, I've loaded the module. I've searched for modules. I've I've run them. I've maybe unloaded them. I've maybe removed sticky ones. You can't remove the sticky ones. This is now. Nah, I've no idea what modules are. All right. So that's about one in five. Don't know what modules are. That's fine because then I'll go a bit more deeper. Yeah. Thanks so much. So we're going to remove our reactions. So our clusters they have a lot of software installed on them. Also of different versions. So imagine you want to run R version 1.2. I don't know if that version exists, but let's say R version 1.2. Then, we, of course, we could install this for you, and then you have for R version 1.2. But on the other hand, maybe someone else wants to run R version 3.4. Then we have a problem, because we can only install one R package version. That is what the module system solves. This is the problem the module system solves. If you want to load R, if you want to activate R, if you want to use R, you load a module of the version you want. And from that moment on, you can use your favorite R version. And the other person that uses a different module version, well, he or she loads a different module. That is the module system and the problem it tries to solve. And there will be two commands in this session that you'll use for this. Uh, module spider to look for those modules and module load to activate such a module. Let us look at that, yeah. To, to, to actually actually activate such a module. So that's a, welcome to uh, the module land. So you'll see when I use the word module, I really mean module. Package really means our package now. Uh, in different languages, there are some confusion here. In Python, it's not. In Python, oh, in R, the packages are called packages and the modules, the slur modules, the, the cluster modules are called modules. 
So let's go through, uh, let's take it, let's revisit this. So find an R module, you do it with module spider. I'll show you in a bit more detail below. Loading a module, and then we can use R and R script from our favorite version. I'm gonna use R a bit. So I scroll through the material now. And after that, you're just gonna do it yourself. Uh, the exercise is just, it, it's very step by step. It's mostly copy pasting uh, what is what I will show now and see if it works. And of course, if there are weird things, then we can fix that. Um, on the other hand, I do predict it will be um, quite straightforward. All right, let's go take a look at step one is uh, at the left, you also see the overview. First, you're gonna find a module, load an R module, use the R interpreter and run an R script. So the cluster module system, it's documented for both HPC centers and the scores. You can find documentation here. Uh, for more detail, I'll be only showing you what you really need in this session. Um, there, there are a bit of small differences um, in HPC 2N. Uh, a module is hidden from search until a prerequisite model is loaded. Uh, whereas in UpMax, you can always see all modules. So in HPC 2N, like you gradually like, oh, all right, first I need this, and then you can look for the other, and then you load that other thing, and then you, can, you, you more build up in steps. Uh, it's a different approach. To look for the module that allows you to load R, you type module spider R, capital R. Uh, for HPC 2N, it's exactly the same. And if you are uncertain if this works for you, you can also click here to see what the output will look like. All right, so this is like some kind of drop down box. And this is how it looks on Captain Kaiser. There's some weird formatting there, but whatever. That can, you can ignore that. Um, so that's how you load a module. That's how you find which R module you're going to load, how, which versions of R are there. Sometimes you need some extra information, like how to, sometimes you want to find more information about R of a certain version, then use module spider R slash that version. For example, module spider R slash 4.1.1. If you do module spider R, you'll get a list of R versions among all the 4.1.1. And if you want more info about that, you add it. That's how you search for your favorite tools using module spider. If you found your favorite module, you think, oh, I'm going to load this one. I'm going to activate this one. That's the next step. I'm going to load that R module, which you do with the command module load R slash that version. For example, module load R slash 4.1.1. On HPC 2M, um, you see that there are things you need to put first um, because the way it, it builds up, it's more, uh, it's more cut down in steps. And then you get something like, like like this command, module load, GCC, whatever that is, you need it. Open MPI, whatever that is, you need it. And then you run, uh, here you have R4.1.2. Do pick the versions we've, we've shown, I show here, because these are the versions we'll be using in the course, All right? Um, do they really, for example, this version is not on, on HPC 2N and maybe the other way around either, so. Up max people, 4.1.1, HPC 2N, 4.1.2. So when you load the module, R exists and you can run it. And this is how you run. So we're going to use the R interpreter. And so step one is going to run it. Step two, we're going to print hello. Three, we're going to see which packages are installed. Four, we're going to load that library. Uh, it should call be, we're going to load that package. Uh, but it uses the command library, it's a bit confusing. And then we're going to stop the R interpreter. So starting the R interpreter is, uh, after loading the module, you type R, capital R, enter. It has to be capital R here, all right? And then uh, R is started. And I'll show you a bit how it looks. It look, looks a bit like this. You see like this text coming up, a lot of text. And at the bottom, you see this bigger than sign. That's called the prompt. This is where you can type. And there you can program in R or, and do stuff in R. So that's when I say in the R interpreter, do this. It means that you are in this part and you're typing here. Okay, you'll see it soon. Um, you can't miss it. When we are in the R interpreter, we're gonna do trivial R things. And already here, this is a warning, only do lightweight things. 
because when we now start R, we are on the login node. And that is uh, whatever the login node is exactly. It is something that is shared with our colleagues and friends. Um, and we want to keep uh, that nice and useful for our colleagues and friends. So we're only going to do lightweight things on this node. We're not going to bother them with doing hard calculation because it will disturb them. Um, you will learn later how to do heavy calculations, but not here. Here, in my session, we're only going to do very trivial, simple things. And that we can do on a login node. Later on, you'll find you'll do heavier stuff, but not in my session yet. So one simple R command you can type in is uh, this print hello world, and then the output will be uh, this thing, index one, hello world. This is irrelevant why this is there. It, it will be part of your output. Within the R interpreter view installed packages, you get a list of all R packages that are installed or available. And if you want to load such an R package, for example, ggplot2, which is for graphics, you type in the R interpreter library ggplot2. You can use quotes. You cannot use quotes. Uh, the social convention is mostly at the moment not to use those quotes, but putting this as a string, which is the more, more proper thing, that's also fine. To quit the thing, to quit the R interpreter, you, you type quit, round bracket open, bracket, round bracket close, uh, to, and then you quit it. It says, do you want to save the workspace image? Whatever that is, just say no until you know what it is. So we have loaded R. We found the R module. We have loaded the R module. We've run the R interpreter, um, but maybe we want to run a script instead. So running an R script, that's just a text file with your R commands in it, you use R script. Notice the S is a small one, but the R is like a, a uppercase character. It's, it's case sensitive here. And then you put a script name there. For example, a script name could be hello.r. Uh, R is capital R, that's a social convention by, uh, by, by the tidyverse, which is the standards. Also here, we only run lightweight scripts. So this script, hello.r, I predict it says hello, and that's not very heavy to do. So those are the exercises. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Find an R module, load an R module, use the R interpreter, uh, check which package are installed, load the package, run an R script. There's only one thing that is not, there's an access for that one is getting an R script. And it looks a bit weird, uh, because of how this thing is rendered. Uh, you need to get an R script uh, to run. We need to run an R script. And you can do it in so many ways. You can download it directly. And you see at the bottom, you see how to download it directly. You can create it from the terminal. You can do it from there. Now you can download it from GitHub directly where all the other exercises are. You can copy it from a tarball on RackCam. You can copy it from a tarball from Capnakai. So just pick your favorite option. But at least you see already where the other exercises will be. So this is more like future proof. Yeah. Uh, I had something to add here. Uh, if you if you pull the GitHub, uh, you will have uh, some clashes with your uh, present exercises that you have done already. So maybe that's not the way to go forward. I have no idea uh, what what this is about. Yeah, I I mean the users if they pull the update. Ah, yeah. They get like, get, uh, yeah, if they do get clone and a get pool, yeah, sure. So if you do a get pool, or get clone, get clone, then uh, you get problems. Uh, worst case, you just delete the repository and clone it again from fresh. And I'm gonna run an R script. So the last 